Hey everyone and welcome to Home Host Evening. This special night that we take time about three or four times a year to come away from the church campus and meet in each other's homes or special locations to pray with each other, to encourage one another, and to have a great time of fellowship. I'm sure glad that you're here and I want to thank your home host for opening up their home and providing this environment for us to just go over some things for the people of Liberty Baptist Church. I want you to know how grateful I am that God's brought you to this ministry. In these last 11 months, God has done more in our church than I can ever remember. We've seen amazing offerings. We've been able to see our church debt uh, grow to almost, uh, almost being finished. And we've seen more people join this church than we ever have in a single year. I just heard a report this past few days that over 100 families have joined Liberty Baptist Church and we're right at 100 people who have followed the Lord and Believer's baptism. That doesn't happen without prayer. That doesn't happen without fellowship. And that doesn't happen without accountability. And your part of this church makes the Lord's work go further, reach deeper, and show the love of Jesus Christ to more people than ever. And so I want to thank you. I just wanted to celebrate with you what God's been doing. You'll remember that we had a wonderful Harvest Fair Sunday just a few weeks ago. The weather was great and uh, so many guests came and we enjoyed the time on the grounds and the pumpkins and the games and the activities. I know that it was a great time and we're following up on those people right now. In the last week we had our celebration of our veterans and the awards and I just love America and the fact that we get to be part of all that God is doing here and I hope that you'll continue to pray with us for our troops in this time. I want to let you know about a few things that are coming up here at Liberty Baptist Church that you're going to want to be involved with because in the next six weeks are some of the busiest seasons here in our ministry and I know it's in your life as well. As we look at the year coming to an end, you have holiday parties, you have Thanksgiving, you have Christmas, and here at the church, we do a lot of evangelistic things. And since many of you are new, I want you to know about the things that are coming up here at the church in the few weeks to come. First of all, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving is a special night. We call it our praise service, and it's a special evening. Our midweek service moves from Wednesday to Tuesday, and we take special time to just praise God and rehearse all of the things that the Lord has done as a church family here at Liberty Baptist Church. I hope you'll join us for that. And then we start going into December. When December comes, we are hit with a bang with the Christmas experience. The very first Sunday in December is our Christmas experience night. And that night is a night where we will evangelize thousands of people with the good news of Jesus Christ. The entire campus will be turned into a winter wonderland. There'll be food trucks and games and a rock climbing wall. We'll have a walk through Bethlehem and we need your help in order to execute that evening. We believe that there will be thousands of guests on campus and so we need people to help park and register and facilitate activities, pour out the hot chocolate and make sure that vendors can get here. It's a busy, busy few hours, but the yield of kingdom growth is immeasurable. I hope you'll plan on being here for that. The week before, just two weeks from tonight, we will have a special Sunday evening service when we will talk about what prep needs to be done, helping people find their groups and assignments so that we can execute well our biggest evangelistic event of the year, the Christmas experience, that first week of December. I also want to let you know that on Christmas Eve, we'll be having special services all throughout Sunday morning and Sunday evening, and it's going to be a wonderful time. The weekend before, December 17th, we'll have an ugly sweater uh, party here at the church. Everyone on that evening service will be encouraged to come. And then the week before that, December 10th, they'll hear from our children in the children's choir. Just a number of activities each and every week to celebrate the fact that Christmas is all about Jesus Christ. And if you're new to Liberty, like many of you are, I'm looking forward to celebrating this special time with you. One thing that I want you to be in prayer about tonight is specifically our Christmas offering. Each year on the last Sunday of December, we take a special red box Christmas offering. We'll take small red boxes and put those out in the lobbies for the weeks leading up to it. And we'll ask you to pray about what God will use your special gift, your Christmas presents to Jesus on December 24th. In those red boxes, people put change, dollar bills, checks, 
and we take that money and we give it to a special project. This year's special project is Jason Holt. They've been missionaries for us down in Chile for almost 20 years. And the Lord's got an incredible evangelistic opportunity through them. And I know that God's going to encourage you as you give to that. I think you should hear from Jason what we're planning on doing through his Christmas offering this year. Hello, Liberty Baptist Church. We are so thankful that we've had 20 years to partner together, reaching Chile with the gospel. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. And thank you for being a part of this plan. In 2024, our goal is to get 24,000 tracks. That's 2,000 tracks each month over a 12-month period. But that's multiplied times 15 churches. There's been 15 churches started through the men that have been trained and sent out of the Bible College there in Chile. Church number 16 is in the process of being started. And we want to get tracks, custom tracks, with the church's address and all the information into the hands of each of these churches. So imagine this. Throughout the entire year of 2024, each month, 15 churches in Chile will have the goal of getting out 500 tracks a week. That's 2,000 per month, 24,000 in 2024, and you all are helping make that possible. You're partnering with us. We're working with these churches. We're going to get literature in their hands, and we're trust that the Holy Spirit will use the gospel as it's passed out and they're in those communities to reach people with the gospel, but then they'll have the church's information of a local church in their community that they can attend to learn more about Jesus and to grow in Christ. This is what we want to see, evangelism and church planning, and you all are helping make that possible. Thank you so much for praying, for giving, and making this possible. I know that encouraged me, and I hope that you'll be praying now about how God will use you with our Christmas offering that we'll take on December 24th. Now, before our time is finished, I just want to encourage you with a thought from the Word of God. And today our attention is going to go to Matthew chapter 25. Over the last few weeks, people have repeatedly asked me about end time events and about the rapture and the tribulation and the circumstances in Israel. And there's a whole lot of things that I wish we could cover in this time. But I want to share with you from a passage that has a great deal of implications about our readiness to meet the Lord. In Matthew chapter 25, there's a parable that Jesus shares with us, and the parable is often referred to as the parable of the ten virgins. Now, I believe there's a specific application to the rapture of the church and how God's going to take his people before he takes that final seven years of tribulation here on this earth to restore Israel as God's chosen people. But until that time, God gives us some warnings, some preparations, and some things that we should be mindful of as we look forward to those future events. If you'll indulge me, Matthew chapter 25, I wanna share with you three thoughts. And I think those three thoughts not only help us about end time events, but specifically in these next six weeks, how do I plan, how do I prepare, and then what's that party look like? Let's share those scriptures. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 and verse one, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Now, any time there is a difference made between the wise and the foolish in the Bible, we want to partner with the wise. We want to avoid the mistakes of the fool. And so God lays it out clearly. Here's what wise people do. Here's what fools do. The setting is that there is a uh, wedding about to happen. When the wedding's about to happen, we don't know exactly when that time is going to come. And so be prepared. Don't be foolish. Make sure that you are wise. So verse number three says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Imagine that their cell phone battery is on the yellow part. It's starting to blink and say, charge in soon. Why? Because there's nothing left. Their oil in their lamp is almost gone. Verse number four, but the wise took all the oil in their vessels with their lamps. They brought their lamps full of oil, and it seems like they took extra oil with them. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and the midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh! Go ye out to meet him, the Bible says in verse 7. And all those virgins arose 
And they trimmed their lamps. They, they took care of the dead wicks and they lit them up again, ready to go. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. We don't have any battery life. All of the oil is gone from our lamps. We, we can't go with you. But the wise answered saying, no, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. It's midnight. It's hard to find an oil dispensary, but this is your only option. You can't take mine because if I give you mine, I'm not going to be able to go. And I, I can't spare that. So you have to go take care of your own business. And while they were yet going to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, said, Verily, I said unto you, I say unto you, and know you not, watch therefore, for ye know whither the day and the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay, a whole lot of implications here. There's a great deal of a desire to know about the rapture. When is Jesus coming? When is the end of the age? And there is a great principle here. Now, take this truth, and if this truth is from the word of God, there's a broader principle to being prepared to see the Son of Man. I also want to ask you to apply it to the next six weeks of your life. So not just in a sense of, yes, theologically we need to do this, but here's some practical application. The, the overall sense is plan for the return of God. Prepare for the return of God because there's a party whenever Jesus comes back, but only if you're ready to meet him. That's plan, preparation, and party. Okay, are you prepared to meet the, Lord, meet the Lord? Are you planning to have a wonderful reunion? And is heaven going to be a party? Is the end of this life for you a party or is it something that, oh, I fear? Well, if you're a member of Liberty Baptist Church, you've already given testimony that Jesus Christ is your savior. And so you've made that preparation. You're planning on meeting him. There is a, a party in heaven. We don't know the day or time whenever Jesus will come, I believe this is specifically speaking to the rapture of the church, but God says you need to plan, you need to prepare because there's a party coming. Okay, here's the application I want you to make in the next six weeks. What's important to you in the next six weeks? I just shared with you things that are important to us as a ministry. All of us have a focus for the Christmas experience. All of us are going to be looking about what we're going to do for our Christmas offering and how we're going to be involved in encouraging and growing this ministry for the glory of Jesus Christ, okay? So these are things that are important to us. As you plan out the next six weeks, look at it intentionally. Perhaps on your way home, you pull out a calendar and you say, okay, what are the things that we've got to do? What are the things that are important? Oh, we want to make uh, Christmas cookies. Great. What night are you going to do it? If not, you'll find yourself without any plans and you'll be at December 28th and think, where did the Christmas season go? Put those plans in place now, okay? Number two, prepare. So if there's things you can be doing now to prepare, if there's a, a, a event you wanna go to, if you want to give to the Christmas offering, if you're going to be part of the Christmas experience or have a guest there, how are you going to invite and prepare for the Christmas experience to be a great night in your life. Don't just let it hit you the day before. Start working now. Send texts out tomorrow. Give somebody an invite to the Christmas experience now. My point is, if we are going to see the things happen that we really wanna see happen, we've got a plan. We have to prepare. Make preparations today. Look at your next six weeks of calendar. What's important? What's not important? Where do you have to go? Where do you wanna go? Where do you want nothing to do with? Start planning now. Prepare so that you'll be able to meet those obligations and then rest in the party. When the party comes, you've planned, you've prepared. Oh, it's Christmas Day. It's a good time. Oh, it's Christmas Eve. It's a good time. The Christmas experience, it's a good time. As we plan and we prepare, understand that God desires for us to enjoy life. He says, the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Don't allow the stress and the busyness of this season to steal away the party. It's a great time to be serving the Lord. And you and I are in a place 
where God desires to manifest his work, his love, and his truth through your life and mine. So allow that, uh, allow that gift to be seen in and through your life and mine. It takes place when we plan, when we prepare, and oh man, then we can party. These wise virgins, they planned. Oh, I do not want to miss this. Oh, they prepared. They took a little bit extra to make sure no matter what happened, they would be ready. And when the party came, they partied. That's where you and I want to live. Don't follow the model of the foolish. Follow the behavior of the wise. Do what Jesus encourages us to do. I'm so thankful that God's given you to this ministry. And I hope this ministry is encouraging you in your walk with God. In 2024, the Lord's going to do bountiful, amazing, and greater and exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think. I believe that there's wonderful things in store for this ministry. And I believe that God's answering prayers through you and through your life. So let's take some time to pray together. Let's take some time to enjoy one another. And let's look forward because we planned, because we prepared, let's look forward to a wonderful party this Christmas season as we celebrate Jesus. Because this whole season, Christmas, is all about Jesus Christ. God bless you. I hope to see you Sunday.